Hi, I'm Tim. In this video, we'll go through the basics of using, of using a foam board to build a radio control model airplane. Uh, you'll find that foam board is easy to use, it's inexpensive, readily available, and can make a wide variety of aircraft. Some examples of what I've done for foam board are this high wing foam flyer. I've designed and built in a day. It absolutely flies wonderfully. A little bit more extreme, perhaps, is this F4 profile model. Uh, it was interesting test flights. I'll show the video card up here. It needs more power. We'll work on that. And finally, you can build large models. Here's a fuselage profile of a four-channel model with landing gear. This is the wing for that model, and we'll talk in more detail how to build this 42-inch wing out of foam board. And again, I've got put a video card up here. You can build half of this wing in 10 minutes. So first of all, let's get to it. And right after we get to it, let's look at some videos of some of these models flying. Ooh. What is foam board? <clears throat> this is foam board right here. They typically come in 20 inch by 30 inch sheets. The width of it is 3 sixteenths of, of an inch. And there are three layers. There's an outer paper layer, an inner polystyrene, polyethylene foam layer, and then another outer paper layer. The foam board is typically used by um, arts and craft stores to mount pictures. <clears throat> what that means for us as modelers will be different types of paper that will be on the outside of the foam board. Again, this is important for modelers because we have to remove the paper as part of our building process. You'll just have to experiment. Uh, foam board can be uh, obtained at a variety of places. This foam board was at a, a dollar store. You can get it at basically any arts and crafts store. You can order it from Amazon. One of the things you want to be careful is that the paper comes off. This is very thin paper, and what happens when you try to when you try to remove the paper, it just is thin enough, glued on such that it doesn't come off. This is the underside of just a, a test wing that I did. <clears throat> because you cannot remove this paper, it's probably not going to be suitable for your RC model airplanes. Other examples that I use is a white paper. This is a thicker paper. It's a higher quality paper just for longer lasting of the photos. What it means for us is it comes off very easily. And this is what the foam board looks like once the paper has come off. As I mentioned, this is a type of foam that is not especially rugged. You can ding it with your fingertip, hang a rash. It's not especially strong. That's to our advantage because it's a lightweight and very easy to cut and to use. We can sand it, do some cutting. When we get commercially produced foam planes like this little $3 glider that I can uh, convert to radio control, I'll put a card up here for that effort. EPP is ex expanded polypropylene. It's a very tough foam. In some cases, it's actually used in automobile bumpers. It's that strong. It's kind of rubbery. It bends well. It resists any sort of surface damage. In other words, EPP is ideal for a manufacturing process where the foam will be produced at the factory. It'll be very tough. It does not need an outer covering. But it's not suitable for what we're doing at home, like with a foam board. It's hard to cut, it's hard to glue, it's just hard to deal with because it is so tough. Let's take a look at some of the characteristics of foam board. This is the 3 16 chin variety. It's got the paper on both sides, and what I'm going to do is bend it. You can see how you can bend it on its own. It'll have creases here. It kind of maintains the shape over the top. Again, you can play with it but this is what it looks like when you bend it. The paper comes off very easily. You simply pick up a corner, 
because this is high quality paper. You see it comes off as easily as that. Let me take off the other side. And now when you play bending it, you can see that it can snap. It has a limit to how far you can go, but it's lightweight and we'll go through some techniques to use the inherent characteristics of the foam to make your model airplane. Now note that this foam, as I mentioned, you can ding it fairly easily. It doesn't resist damage all that well. Because it's plastic, it is waterproof. I've taken another example with the paper and soaked it in water. You can see that with the uh, water on the paper, it gets kind of gunky, and that's what it looks like. The takeaway from this is if you leave the paper on the foam and it gets wet, which it will do when you're flying um, RC model airplanes from do or whatever characteristic, you have to do something to cover the foam with either heat shrink covering or tape. I'll cover that later on in the video. Foam board is very easy to work with. I use a standard number 11 X-Acto knife it's in your interest to have a very sharp knife. If the knife is a little bit dull, which it can with glue and uh, repeated use, it'll start tearing at the foam. It's very simple just to get a uh, hundred pack of number 11 blades. That way you can replace them when they start getting dull. It's also important when you're cutting the foam to have a metal straight edge, not a plastic because the knife will cut it, but a metal straight edge, a shorter one for smaller cuts and a larger one when you're making larger wings just to cut against the metal straight edge for a nice even cut on the um, foam. You remember when I bent the foam it just snapped. Here's an example of using an inherent technique of the foam to create a curve for the wing. And what I did, you can see this is a 12 inch wing, four inch cord. I scored into the foam about halfway into the foam uh, depth wise about a quarter of an inch along the way. By doing that, I could kind of crack the foam a little bit because it was scored in this place to allow the curve for the airfoil. In this way, a very easy way to make an airfoil shape for the wing. These ribs are made out of foam. I put three of these in place. This is for a light enough model where there's no need for any spars on the wings, but this is a very efficient, lightweight wing with an airfoil shape. And this is exactly the technique that I used for this model here. Again, 1.7 ounces is not going to be applicable for larger models. To show you the versatility of the foam, you can make larger wings like the 42 inch wing that I showed earlier. Um, and this uses the arm and wing technique. I'll put a card on here um, on how to make a wing with the foam in 10 minutes. And what happens is you literally take a, the, the width of this cord uh, a rib airfoil sections is seven inches. So you have, as you'll see in the video, 14 inches of foam, and you literally, at the halfway point, you fold it back on itself and glue in the back. And if you look inside here, at the fold point, there are a wing spar that are two layers of the foam, one inch wide, one inch back. These spars are glued to the bottom, glued to each other, glued to the top of the wing. The wing is put on a flat, building surface and you literally fold it back as shown in the video above to make the airfoil shape and it's a surprisingly accurate airfoil shape. You can see how it curves up. It looks absolutely like a Clark Y airfoil. It's lightweight and it is tough. It's strong. So an application of this is this 42 inch wing. Now the foam board comes in 30 inches wide. So this half is um, 21 inches. This half is 21 inches, the total is 42 inches. You join it in the middle, uh, just two halves, you glue it in. And what you can do with the foam, because you, the strength is obviously not enough just to glue it in the middle, you can put reinforcing wood in here. And what I use for that reinforcing wood, quite simply, is popsicle sticks. These are available at any craft store. And with the glue, you can just put them against those two foam spars here and here, and that's how you can very easily join the wing with um, hot glue. The other technique of building with foam that is most helpful for strength is this drywall reinforcing tape. Got this at Home Depot. It's a little bit sticky, so it tack holes in place. And this tape is very useful 
for sealing things like, you can see it under the covering, the center of the wing section, and the tape along here, just where the wing will be stressed below and the popsicle sticks inside here. Notice also I use the popsicle sticks for control horns on the ailerons. As I mentioned, the foam board builds very quickly, and one of the reasons that it builds quickly, other than the ease of cutting it with an X-Acto knife, is you can glue it very quickly. There are several options for glue. You can certainly use Gorilla Glue, although this takes a long time to dry. You can use 5-minute epoxy, but as these models are typically electrical powered, there's really no need for the 5-minute epoxy. What works absolutely great is a glue gun. This is just a $10 glue gun that you get on Amazon anywhere at craft stores. It has a glue stick. It heats up a trigger. So what we'll do is we will give a demonstration of you just squeeze the trigger, put on a little bit of the glue, and then you can put this in place. I can feel it setting already, and this will be strong enough. It'll be completely dry in about 20 seconds. The other thing that you can use as a build technique is we have two layers here. This is a very common technique to make strength for certain portions. For example, in the fuselage of this airplane, it's a profile, but I actually have three layers of foam for the fuselage just for added strength. But for some of your models, you may want strength in the nose area where the engine's mounted, etc. What you can do is you can very easily take some plywood, put it onto the foam, and then another layer. So let's do that very quickly. A little bit of hot glue. Plywood was in place. Then as you design your models, you'll have the foam on the outside just for sanding or whatever, but that wood in the middle, especially if you're mounting a landing gear, an engine mount for a larger model, that provides a great deal of strength for your RC model airplane. We've discussed using foam board for wings, smaller wings with a uh, score top technique, folding over the arm and wing, profile fuselages. You can also make regular fuselages with sides and formers. Again, this is just a test. We have the styrofoam for the side. I scored along here because it's going to bend into the nose and for the tail. The formers are foam formers. The two by the center section, one for the nose. And by putting another piece of foam on top, it provides a quite rigid nose section for a lightweight electric powered model. And also, also I discussed you can sand foam. You can see how I sanded the um, edges here into a curve. So you can experiment how much you can go um, with the sanding, but it is possible for a little bit of appearance to sand the size of the foam. We've also discussed the need, if you can fly this model with no covering on the foam, it'll certainly fly okay. The catch is it won't resist uh, dings, hang hanger rash, little um, imperfections just for the course of handling. So it's a good idea to come up with some sort of covering you can use iron-on coverings like I did here. This is just a piece of uh, Oracoat um, iron-on covering onto a piece of foam. You've got to be careful of the iron-on coverings. This is a fairly large section of foam, so the foam is strong enough to resist bending moments from the shrinkage of the iron-on covering. If you try iron-on covering onto smaller things, like maybe a aileron for a small model that's a half inch wide, the shrinkage of the covering will warp the aileron. It just is not an applicable feature. An example of heat um, covering for a larger uh, model is this entire wing is done with iron-on covering. And these are uh, decals done on a laser printer. I'll put a card up for that. And this is a very suitable covering for a wing of this size because it's strong enough. It won't bend or warp from the small amount of shrinkage of the iron-on covering. Another option that is very suitable for foam board is to use packing tape, colored packing tape. This is common packing tape. You can get it at a variety of sources. It's very sticky. It's very lightweight. It's fairly strong with a color, but there are many modelers that will take a piece of the tape and they will literally just put it onto the foam, keep it flat, and this is a very suitable, lightweight, effective covering. The catch is you'll find that the um, packing tape, good experiment with it, 
it's extremely sticky because it's packing tape. You've got one chance to put this on. There's no lifting off and readjusting. And what most models will do that use the packing tape, which again is a, a very viable technique, is to lay it onto the flat foam board before they start building wings and assembling the model. It's going to be much harder to put on the packing tape after the model is complete. Thank you for watching this video. Um, I enjoy building models from foam board. It's a very um, fun technique to do. It's affordable. It's easy. It builds quickly. Uh, rapid prototypes are very easy to experiment with. So I uh, encourage you to try with foam board. You'll have some very nice flying models. I think the key contribution of foam board, because it's so lightweight, you can build very lightweight models. Smaller models that are lightweight always fly better. I've had some very good successes with my foam board models. Good luck.